All right, in the last video, we talked about linear velocity, which is the velocity you can impart to actually move your particles through three-dimensional space. And there was a property that I didn't mention that I should have, so I'll go ahead and just kind of patch that up here, and then we'll go on to our angular velocities. And this is tangent velocity. What tangent velocity is going to allow you to do is to impart a motion to your particles along the surface of your ellipsoid. So if you take this for example in X and you set it to three, if you take a look at what you're doing, you're actually moving these particles out. You can actually almost kind of see a vortex like spin at the center core. Now I realize we're capturing this video at a mere 10 frames a second. So seeing that vortex like motion may be a little tricky on your end. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of illustrate what we've got here. If I take all of this stuff and just kind of nuke it and get out of the way, and if we draw just kind of a representation of our ellipsoid. What's going on here is that when a particle is born, we are picking on a tangent direction. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of tangents, like on a circle, in this case, it would be this outermost direction. It's whatever direction the circle happens to be going at any given point. Right. It's the ray perpendicular to the edge or the point at which it intersects the circle. That's right. And it's exactly that type of motion which is being imparted to our particle. So if we get one over here, it would be firing off in this direction. Or if we had one, say, uh, here, it would be firing off in this direction. Again, it's along the surface of our emitter. Right. And if you remember, our emitter is an ellipsoid or a spherical shape. And that is why we have particles in the center, and it doesn't look like it's it, it's being spawned from the edge of a uh, circle, because it's actually being adjusted or spawned off from various locations throughout the entire ellipsoid. Exactly. So that's just a quick rundown of what tangent velocity does. Again, it's just going to apply some some. Uh, linear motion based on the tangent of the ellipsoid at any given point in space. Now, let's move on to angular velocity. Now, angular velocity allows you to spin your particles. And this is going to allow you to add critical amounts of realism to such effects as fire, smoke. Uh, if you have, you know, leaves that you're emitting in the form of particles, you generally want your leaves to rotate. Right. Uh, anything that needs to rotate around, you're going to need some angular velocity. Now, this is pretty easy to work with. First off, we have our angular velocity here. You can think of this very much like uh, degrees per second of rotation. Unfortunately, with the particle system we have now, our texture is not going to show us much by way of rotation. So I'm going to change things out. In fact, I'm going to make a few different changes to our particle system to help make this a little more apparent. If I come down to our particle renderer, you'll see once again that we've got our pixie dust applied. Actually, let's come all the way down here to the shader. And we've got the pixie dust texture here. I'm going to click on the select button for our texture. And because I loaded in that default package for particles, we have all kinds of stuff we can add in. Here's flame E, which is pretty directional. It's like the kind of a flaming letter C, like the old Contra logo. But everything right now is pointed in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to make things just a little bit bigger. I don't have to do this. I'm doing it just for the fun of it. Let's go with 0.3 and 0.3. And it's start actually starting to look a little bit flame-like, but it does look a little strange that all of your particles are not only pointed in the same direction, but they're not turning. And this is where angular velocity comes in. So let's start with angular velocity, which again, is it's very much like uh, degrees per second of rotation. So if I set this to 360, we're getting about one full revolution every second. Give or take, I think that's about right. I mean, as you increase this, you'll notice they start spinning faster. So if we set this to like, oh, 500, they just start really spinning like mad. Right, but this does also point out the uh, point where while particle systems are technical, getting something to feel like fire is an art form. So you mm -hmm. will be coming in here and dialing in numbers like crazy to get the feel that you're looking for. And this is where it's all a matter of practice. Now, notice that right now all these particles are rotating, and actually I probably need to slow them down because i got to remember we're recording this, we're capturing at 10 frames a second. So let's pull this to about 120. And if you give that a second to do its thing, I'm also going to put a little bit of motion on these. It'll just make things a little easier to see. So let's give them a local Y of 1.5. Even that's a little bit fast for what I have in mind. So let's pull that down to just 0.5. There we go. So just enough to see that they are turning. 
and the the motion kind of helps keep them separated now in terms of our angular velocity a positive value will be a clockwise spin a negative value so if we set this to negative 120 notice that the new particles being born are now rotating counterclockwise but of course very rarely and especially in an effect like fire will you want all of your particles to be rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise so most of the time you won't even use angular velocity instead you'll use random angular velocity and this is a plus or minus value right just like the random velocity was you set in a number and it's going to rotate between the extreme negative and the stream positive of whatever number you type in That's right. and every point in between so now this actually looks like some sort of ghostly ethereal cheerios being lifted up into the air this looks like actually a really good flame if you had like flame that was snaking up the walls Right, but the rolling type yeah, of flame. Yeah, but more for, like along the ceilings and stuff. That you yeah, see in background. precisely, precisely. But for this kind of thing, it's just it's cool for an example, but it's not the most realistic fire in the world. So you can see that again, random angular velocity is causing some of our particles to spin clockwise as fast as uh, 120 or counterclockwise. So it just again plus or minus value. Now next we have random rotation, and to really show this off, I'm going to set my angular velocity back down to zero. And we'll let that kind of normalize. We'll let uh, all of our spinning particles die off. As a matter of fact, let me pull down my emission rate just to get some of the particles out of our way. And again, you'll notice that all of these particles are oriented in the exact same direction. By clicking random rotation, each one of these particles will be born with a random amount of spin already applied. Now, they aren't continuing to turn. We're not imparting an angular velocity right now. We're just saying at the moment they're born, we want them to already have some sort of random rotation. And that's really all there is to this. So that's it. That's everything for our angular velocity. It's really just velocity imparted to rotation. Right. It's just a way to add a little bit more life into your particles or variety mm -hmm. into your particles. And that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.